everyone. Welcome to the session of non-rebreathing systems. So I just wanted to tidy up breathing systems because in my last talk, I talked mostly about rebreathing systems, the adult and the pediatric circle. And today I wanted to take some time to talk about the structure function of non-rebreathing systems. So non-rebreathing systems kind of says what it does on the tin. So Basically, the purpose of a non-rebreathing system is that the animal is not going to rebreathe any of its CO2. And this is accomplished by the design and the flow rate of oxygen that we use on these particular breathing systems. So before I go into the specifics, I just want to talk to you a little bit about how these systems are built and about how they are classified. So with non-rebreathing systems, these systems do not rely on the presence of unidirectional valves. So that's the first thing we need to know. So you know that in a circle breathing system, you have two ends that are plugged into the machine and there is an inspiratory valve and an expiratory valve that control the flow of fresh gas flow and the CO2 that's directed to the scavenging system and soda sort of canister respectively, okay? So in the non-rebreathing system, because we use a high fresh gas flow rate and there is no soda sorb canister used in that system. We do not need the unidirectional valves to direct that gas flow, okay? Because fresh gas flow comes down its own tube and scavenging is attached to a passive scavenger or an active scavenger in a different place, okay? So we do not have unidirectional valves in a non-rebreathing system and Carbon dioxide in this type of breathing system is washed out by high fresh gas flow rates. And this makes sense, right? If we have high fresh gas flow rates of oxygen, what's gonna happen is that that high rate is gonna flush out the CO2 out of the non-rebreathing system and direct it towards a scavenging system. So that's another thing we need to know about a big difference between this and rebreathing systems. Now, because CO2 is washing out is being washed out by the fresh gas flow, we also have no direct separation of inspiratory and expiratory gases. So let me give you an idea of what that means. This is your pediatric circle. So this is a rebreathing system that would be appropriate for most patients under 10 kilos. And you can tell that there's two different limbs, right? There's gonna be one going to the inspiratory side of the anesthesia machine, and the other is gonna to go towards expiratory. And you remember that they have their own unidirectional valves. So those gases are relatively separate from one another. This is our lovely non-rebreathing system. Specifically, this is a Mapleson D type system. The non-rebreathing systems are classified according to Mapleson, categories. So there's Mapleson A through F. Some of them we do not use in medicine very much anymore and some of them are still very much in use. Some of the most popular machines today remain the Mapleson D and the Mapleson F or the Ayers modification of the T piece which is Mapleson F. So this is Mapleson D. So there is no separation of the gases. So what I want you to know is that the patient is going to go on this end because this is the patient connector. The fresh gas flow is going to be attached to a port on the anesthesia machine and it is going to travel down this long thin piece of tubing okay and this goes to the patient and then expiratory gases are usually going to come down this limb but there is a lot of mixing going on and one of the purposes of having high fresh gas flow is to help flush that co2 down this limb. the expired co2 is going to come down this limb and at this point, we have a place where we can control ventilation. So one of the modifications we have on this system is that we have an APL, an adjustable pressure limiting valve. And sometimes we're lucky enough, there's a manometer so we can tell how much pressure is being transmitted to the patient. And we will also have a reservoir bag. Off of the APL valve, there is scavenge tubing. It is usually a different color and this is safety designed in mind. And then we know that yellow and purple usually means scavenging. So this is the place where it attaches to the scavenging system. So there's no direct separation of inspiratory and expiratory gases in the system. And the purpose of that high fresh gas flow is to wash that CO2 down to where it can be scavenged. Now, because the tubing is very thin and relatively small and lightweight, 
these systems generally have low resistance to expiration. And what I mean by that is think of breathing through a straw versus breathing through a PVC pipe, right? So a straw, we're gonna encounter a lot of force when we breathe against it, but when we're breathing through like a big pipe or something like that, we're just going to get release of flow. We're not gonna get something kind of pressing back on us, right? And that is exactly what I mean when I say low resistance. So relatively low resistance. So for a very small patient, a patient that doesn't have very powerful breathing, that can be really advantageous. You don't wanna restrict their ability to expire unnecessarily. And the other thing that this system provides is that it allows you to provide a very rapid change in fraction-inspired isofluorine or gas concentration. So what do I mean when I say this? So we talked about earlier how we use high fresh gas flow rates on this system, and that is mostly used to wash out the CO2 that accumulates in the system. Because we don't have a canister, we're gonna rely on the fresh gas flow to do that. Now, the higher your fresh gas flow, the higher your oxygen flow, the faster the change in isofluorine is going to happen in your breathing system. Because we know that from the rebreathing system lecture that the change in isofluorine or gas concentration has to do with time constants. So the faster you prime the system with high flow rates of oxygen, the faster the rate of gas change happens. And for this reason, for the low resistance and for the rapid change in gas concentration, this is one of the reasons why non-rebreathing systems are preferred in very small patients or in exotic animals. There are a lot of things that are yet to be discovered about the maintenance and provision of anesthesia for exotic animals. And in animals where they might wake up at seemingly random times or animals that were unfamiliar in anesthetizing, so things like geckos and chameleons and exotic birds and small little tortoises, this system is very much preferred because if the animal moves and say, you don't have vascular access because it's a challenging species to do that in, the rapid change in isofluorine can help you make the patient a little bit deeper. And we need that high concentration to wash out the CO2. So these systems, we always run at around 300 mils per kilo per minute of oxygen. And that is why they are tend to only be suitable for patients that are small. I will talk about this later. Some other advantages of this system, lightweight and non-bulky. Easy, right? If you have a very small patient that you're running on this system, you want the system to be easy to position on the table. You want it not to weigh on this very tiny patient, so that is a great thing. Another thing that is an advantage of this system is that we have little to no production of toxic compounds that we encounter when we go past the sodasorb canister. So there are certain inhalant agents and certain conditions which favor the buildup of toxic compounds when mostly when we're working on rebreathing systems. But because in the non-rebreathing system, we're not using unidirectional valves and we're bypassing the sodasorb canister, there's little to no production of some of those compounds. So that's another potential advantage you can cite. Just to go over a bit more of the structure, you know, I held up the system, but in case you wanted to have a picture of the Mapleson D, which is what we have here, we have the fresh gas flow pipe, which is piped in very close to the patient end. The patient is gonna be down here. And then we have corrugated tubing, which is gonna come away from the patient and where the fresh gas flow is. And right next to the corrugated tubing is gonna be the presence of a reservoir bag and an EPL valve, an adjustable pressure limiting valve. And we can use this to control a little bit of ventilation. So provide IPPV, intermittent positive pressure ventilation. And then off of the EPL valve, we will usually have a scavenging pipe. Fairly easy. So just like with every choice you make for an anesthetized or sedated patient, you need to be particular about your choice of a non-rebreathing system because this is not going to be appropriate for all patients. So let's talk about some of the potential cons that you can run into when using this system. So we know, I'm gonna write this down here, fresh gas flow rate, 300 mils per kilo per minute. And remember, when we were talking about rebreathing systems, you can run them much lower because they're gonna rebreathe their gases because it's scrubbed of CO2, right? Rebreathing. as low as 10 
but up to 30 mils per kilo per minute. See how that mu that's much lower? That's because it gets scrubbed of CO2. So very big difference in the flow rate you need to run those systems, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, cons. So I would generally only recommend a non-rebreathing system for a patient that is less than five to seven kilos, and here is why. So if you have a very large patient which is breathing into very small diameter tubings, it creates more resistance in general. Now, that being said, non-rebreathing systems provide less resistance, but if you have a 40 kilo dog and you're having it breathe through a very small diameter tube, you're gonna have high resistance and you don't want that. The other reason why I would only recommend the system for very small patients is because of the high fresh gas flow requirement. So a five kilo dog is going to need five times 300 mils a minute of oxygen. So that's 1.5 liters. So at the very least, you need to run your system at 1.5 liters and that is so that we scrub CO2 from the system. If you are doing a five kilo patient on a rebreathing system, on a circle pediatric system, you could run it at 500 milliliters a minute maintenance, okay? So as long as you provide metabolic oxygen requirement and you've washed in the system with isofluorine for 15 to 20 minutes, you can turn it down to low flow anesthesia as long as you're providing enough gas for that patient to have metabolic oxygen and you're running it at like 500, which is at least what the vaporizer needs to be efficient. So small patients only, okay? You cannot provide more than five liters a minute on the, on the flow meter. So a 20 kilo dog times 300 mils per kilo per minute, not really gonna be feasible on a non-rebreathing system. So small animals only, okay? Now, because we use very high flows of oxygen, we're gonna use more oxygen, we're gonna use more inhalant, and that's gonna cost the hospital money. It may not be your money, but this is something you might need to think about if you're ever doing purchasing for a practice or you own your own practice. So it can use up more money. We use very high fresh gas flow rates in this system, and some of these breathing systems have a bag, and our lovely Mapleson D does have a bag. Now, the bag is just attached to the breathing system and we're using high flood, fresh gas flow rates, right? If the bag becomes kinked or if the bag becomes bent over or obstructed, that fresh gas flow is going to keep coming into the bag, okay? So one of the potential problems that you can have is that you can have barotrauma or lung trauma from the system and that's because pressure builds up very, very, very rapidly. So if you have this system, make sure the bag is always laid out flat if you are going to provide IPPV with a pop-off valve on these systems, make sure you just hold it for a moment and then let it go because pressure builds up very quickly, okay? Watch the bag for obstruction, barotrauma if obstructed or the APL valve is closed. And for this reason, a lot of these APL valves are quick release, okay? So in summary, the main differences between this system and the rebreathing is that the CO2 is gonna get washed out by high fresh gas flow rates on our Mapleson D, which is what we have at our practice, we're gonna use 300 mils per kilo per minute. But if you were using a circle, you could get away with something much, much lower. We like these systems because you can rapidly change isofluorine concentration. So maybe for exotic animals, this is something that's gonna be really helpful. They're lightweight, they tend to be pretty cheap and they're not bulky, less production of toxic compounds, depending on what type of system and agent you're using. I would only recommend them for smaller patients. They do tend to cost more money if you use high fresh gas flow rates, which is what you need. And you need to be very careful that the orientation of the system is laid nice and flat and you can easily see all parts.